Hello everyone, this is a video tutorial for the book, The Vagabond's Guide to Successful But Making Them Cheap YouTube Production While Living in Your Van and Making Money at It. The book can be downloaded from livinginyourvan.com and there are numerous other video tutorials available on this channel, though more details for each technique are provided in the book. The book is intended for professional video production on the cheap and in the most inopportune situations. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm out here to do a tutorial on using the Canon T2i uh, for time-lapse photography and video at nighttime. So uh, I'm out here in the middle of the woods. I'm actually on an old abandoned rail bed that they're presently ripping up here. It is a gorgeous night, although there is some clouds moving in from the northwest, which is unfortunately the direction I actually wanted to shoot because there's a nice lake there and I was hoping to get the reflection of the stars off the lake, but alas, there's clouds there. However, over here in this direction, I can actually still see the Milky Way, so that'll make a beautiful shot. And uh, what I'm gonna try and do is set up so that I have some actually, actually have some trees in the view of the camera. So here's my setup. I've got the uh, Canon on the tripod, and I brought my laptop, I actually backpacked all this out here. And that's my nice little portable table. You can get those at a lot of different stores. Uh, it just folds up and you can actually attach it to your backpack or just carry it by hand. Now the first problem you're going to run into, of course, over time is that uh, the best time for shooting night time, of course, is when it's clear out. And I don't know if the camera's even, this camera's amazing, it might even focus on some of the stars, but uh, um, the problem is clear nights, of course, are cold. And as a result, you wind up getting fog on the lens over time. So the longer you shoot, the more fog you get in the lens, the darker your picture becomes. So here's a little trick head to Walmart or the outdoor stores or the pharmacy. All these places typically held sell these hot packs. Uh, this one's in Francais. Cousin chauffeurs pour la mains. Pour les mains. Hand warmers. Okay, so these are just chemical hand warming packs and you get these and an elastic. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this, I'm gonna activate it and wrap it around the lens and that will gently warm the lens. I'm gonna do that first before I focus and set the zoom. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, I'll do this and then I'll come back. Okay, so here you can see the setup. I've got the hand warmer on the lower side of the lens. I zoomed it out before I uh, strapped it on the lens. This is just gonna gently warm the lens and all that will do, that, it just warms it up just enough to keep the fog off the lens. So that's all it's going to do. So now we're going to set up the focus. So the stock lens that comes with the T2 and most of the Canon lenses, uh, if you just manually focus them to infinity in the dark like I did the first time, you'll get back home and discover that all your shots are out of focus. That's because these things come with a Buzz Lightyear lens. Uh, they will focus to infinity and beyond. <laughs> So basically what happens is uh, if you just manually focus out to the full extent of the lens, uh, it will actually be out of focus. So you have to bottom it out and back it up a bit. We're going to check the focus by actually connecting to the computer for to set up for the intervalometer anyway. Uh, but that's just make a note of that, okay? Don't do what I did and just manually so set it in the dark. If you just bottom it out to what you think is infinity, infinity, it will actually be out of focus. I won't go into the technical reasons why that is, but it's actually designed that way. That's the way the lens is designed. So setting up the camera, notice I got the USB cable here and heading over to the laptop, you're going to set your camera on manual and you're going to manually override everything. Okay, let's set up the camera, get everything hooked up. Okay, with the camera turned on, USB plugged in, the Canon utility should show up. Uh, what you're after is here the EOS utility. We're going to run that and this will give us manual control of the camera. The camera will not save images to the camera stick but rather it will actually save it to the computer. Okay so when you come to this pop-up screen control the camera you're going to go to camera settings remote shooting and that will bring up a little control dialog box. There's what it looks like, and there's my manual settings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple test shots, and I'm gonna run through this with you and show you uh, what the settings are and what I'm using for this night shot. It will vary for, for your night shot. In my particular case, I am going to actually make a video. So you have a couple of options here. If you wanna do my fancy Ken Burns video effect, uh, which I talk about in another tutorial, 
uh, you will have to keep the images large. However, uh, even high definition video is really only a four megapixel image. So if you wanna save hard drive space and all that, if you're just gonna do a video of your time lapse, just shoot in four megapixel. There's no need to shoot any bigger than that. Um, so it's a little cold tonight too. It's right now it's five below and dropping. Uh, so my batteries won't last as long either, but I should be able to get at least an hour or two of shooting in uh, before we before I have to pack her in and run out of battery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick test shot. I actually do that by manually triggering the camera. So that's going to take a two and a half second shot. I'm going to process it and then I was going to dump the image here. Okay, that is horribly grainy. So I'm going to mess with the settings here. It does look uh, focused, however. That was the more important thing I was looking for, was the focus. The graininess is horrible. So I'm going to monkey with the uh, images here and see what I'm do doing wrong. Okay, so I did a test shot. I was looking for a number of things. Okay, everything is nice and crisp. So I got the focus bang on. Uh, the trees are nice and crisp. I've got a nice scene with the trees here in. Lots and lots and lots of stars coming through. It looks really, it's, it's about perfect. Just ever so slightly grainy, but that's just going to happen with uh, night shots. There's not a lot you can do about that. Right now I have the ISO set on 3200. Now the T2 will go right up to 6400 if you want. Uh, but the higher the ISO, the grainier the image. So I cranked it down one and instead cranked up the time. Uh, I wanted, I sacrificed time for a slightly less grainy image for the sake of video, even though, frankly, uh, when it comes to video, you can probably get away with it. But I wanted my images nice and clear. Uh, my f-stop right now, I'm running at 3.5. Uh, the white balance, notice I've set it to manual. I just set it to manual on sunlight and uh, everything else, and I'm running about four seconds of exposure time. It's taken about four or five seconds to process the each image. So when I set up my intervalometer, I'm gonna set it up for 10 seconds per picture. Okay, so everything looks good to go. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up the intervalometer. Here it is here. And here's your delay time and your interval shooting time. This is, well, this is really all I'm concerned about right here is uh, I'm gonna crank that to 10 seconds. And shots, I've just gotta set it a thousand, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, I've already set up the folder where it's gonna set it. And so I just start. So now the computer takes over the camera and it does the rest. I'm just gonna stand back for at least a half an hour to an hour, uh, get a, a decent series of images um, and see how long the battery lasts see if I can fend off the wolves here. Okay, so unfortunately what's happened, while I set up, uh, a thin layer of cloud has moved in and it's got little waves in it that are sort of moving across the screen. This is both good and bad. First of all, it does look really cool because it adds a whole new dy dynamic to your time-lapse video where you now have these clouds flying across the screen as well. And the camera will see them and will pick them up. Uh, unfortunately, it also hides some of the dimmer stars. So it kind of takes away from what you were here to shoot, which was the stars. Um, but at the same time, I'm just going to let it go. Um, there's nothing I can do about the weather anyway. And I came all the way out here in the middle of the woods and to uh, uh, deal with the bears and the wolves so I could take this shot. So I'm just going to let it go for an hour and see how it looks in the end. And uh, what will happen is in post-production, I'll give you an idea of what the Ken Burns effect is, which you can do with these just absolutely huge images. And you, you don't need an extremely expensive camera to do this. Uh, the Canon T2i is really nice for this, the 3i, 3i as well, uh, both basically the same camera. Uh, really nice for this because of the auto capture feature. You can bring out a laptop with you in the field and do all this. Uh, but you can really do this with just any cheap camera uh, during daylight, though it's a lot harder at night. Okay, so we've been just under an hour. I've taken 335 shots so far. So at 30 frames a second, that's you know like 11 seconds worth of uh, video at one frame per second. Um, typically with stop motion animation, which is really what this is, you're looking at one to two frames, um, uh, or sorry, each each image will be in the video for one to two frames. So this could be as much as 22 seconds or even 30 seconds of video. Um, it looks really nice. So I think I'm gonna stop there. 
Uh, as you can see, I'm getting a lot of uh, moisture on the computer screen even. I might be getting some fog on the lens of the camera. It doesn't look like it, but it might be. So, I'm going to pack up shop here and I'm going to move to another spot in another part of the forest. This video tutorial is for the book, The Vagabond's Guide to Successful, but making them cheap, YouTube production while living in your van and making money at it. The book can be downloaded from www.livinginyourvan.com and there are numerous other video tutorials available on this channel with details for each technique provided in the book. The book is intended for professional video production on the cheap and in the most inopportune situations.